Trump still reeling with the fallout from the racist, misogynistic insult-fueled rally they held Sunday night, where speakers really put the MSG in misogyny at that Madison Square Garden rally. And now, a lot of blame is going around with Trump aides and Republicans saying this was not the way they wanted to kick off the final full week. A couple of the key states I want to show you numbers as well. We don't know who they're voting for, but in Wisconsin, which is a big, important state there, in the so-called blue wall, 850,000 people, I can tell you, have now voted tonight. That's more than last week, of course. In Michigan, a whopping 1.9 million Michiganders have exercised their vo voice and their vote. And I'll tell you, when it comes to Michigan, we can't tell you red or blue. People do say go blue there, but that's not a partisan comment. That's a football thing. Final state we're watching tonight in Pennsylvania, 1.4 million people have already voted. We could tell you more registered Democrats have voted in that state. Trump is campaigning there tonight. That is one of the states that could define everything. When you see the PA call on election night or whenever it comes in, that's one of the ones both campaigns will be watching closely. Then there's the scene at the Ellipse in Washington. You can see the setup here. This is where Harris will be giving a special address designed to highlight the exact site where Donald Trump went and gave his infamous address after his 2020 loss and where he pushed his failed coup plot one last time on his supporters. That day, his audience, we know, was filled with many now convicted criminals who went on to storm the Capitol. Trump told them to fight like hell. And many of his aides, lawyers, and other allies had coordinated plots to hijack the certification of the ballots that showed his loss inside the very Capitol that those people stormed. It is a contrast to what the Harris campaign says will be a massive crowd of 40,000 watching the scene you see on your screen there. And they do expect a peaceful crowd, and there's no capital incident or capital procedure to be storming today. They are saying at the Harris side that this will be a very clear way to present to an evening audience and that live audience for closing argument. They've released some of these speech excerpts. You may remember this tradition from States of the Union and other types of addresses. So we have here where she will say Trump plans chaos, division, and policies that help those at the top and hurt everyone else. I offer a different path, she will say according to these excerpts, and I ask for your vote. I pledge to listen to experts, to those who will be impacted by decisions I make, sort of a mix of a technocratic and populist point there that she's making in simple, spare words. Anyone could understand that sentence. And she will, according to the text, make a final bid to people who may still not agree with her. Again, we're a week out. I just showed you about a third of the electorates already voted. But there are people left who may vote, haven't made up their mind, and still disagree with her on something important, something top of mind. She is, according to the text draft, going to speak to them tonight in this closing argument, saying, quote, and to people who disagree with me, unlike Trump, I don't believe people who disagree with me are the enemy. He wants to put them in jail. I'll give them a seat at my table. Now, this is one of those funny features of modern media where the campaign puts out the early excerpts because they want people to see a, a sampling and then tune into the whole thing. You're welcome to keep it on MSNBC and hear it tonight. So now we have articles about a speech that, to be clear, has not been given yet. The New York Times says Harris's argument in the speech, I'll show you, will quote, closing argument, turn the page on Trump and avert chaos. As you can see, they have, I think, the same excerpts we do in our newsroom. You have to listen to the whole thing if you want to decide for yourself how it sounds, but those are clear high points. Harris's warning of January 6th style chaos. If Donald Trump did that once to avert his own loss, he would do it on other issues, and he's been publicly vowing to abuse power. So that's happening, and the timing tonight is coincidental, but really striking that as she talks about that January 6th low day in American history, which everyone knows was caused by Trump, it's a question of whether it met a criminal threshold for him. Many other people have been convicted. He awaits trial on those issues, you may recall, by Jack Smith. But whether it's a crime or not, it was certainly a terrible low point that he caused. His speech, his gathering, his tweet that said, come on January 6th. And so as she reminds everyone of that, I can tell you some news today. A Trump campaign and White House aide who literally went to prison for defying the January 6th probe. Of all days, Steve Bannon is out of that prison sentence Today, he was convicted on that same charge as Peter Navarro, you may recall. He's out. He served four months for that charge. You can see him leaving after serving his time, his debt. And he addressed MAGA supporters in his own live stream and also said this when reporters approached. 
you're out of prison. I wonder if you're any reforms looking back on the last January 6th and the fact that you incited a mob that ended up... That would be, that would be, that would be, that would be, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, that hang on. This is because Vice President Pence didn't handle it correctly. This caused Vice President Pence to not handle it correct, correctly. No, 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 absolutely no change. No change. He served his time, but he has not reformed on these issues. He's literally blaming the vice president, who, remember, was a policy and personally loyal to Donald Trump up until January 6th. Vice President Pence, he's saying, if only you'd gone along with the coup to steal power, then everything would have been different and okay. And remember, he is connected, like Navarro, to Trump, and this is the very public message of what they're saying they are about, even after prison time, if Trump wins and gets back into office. Then, as I mentioned, the MSG fallout, the campaign of Donald Trump doing damage control after those racist jokes and tirades from many different people. Now, I can tell you this scandal has maintained interest across America. Forget political or news junkies who were probably going to be discussing this rally no matter what. Online, we're seeing many people discussing it, not only in a bad way, but in a way that MSG Rally, you see the Google searches there, peaks much higher than the last couple of weeks, which are the campaign home stretch. You have to go back to the horrific attempted assassinations to find this kind of, any kind of level of Google traffic like that. More people were Googling about the Trump comedian, which the campaign itself has basically disowned, the one who made the racist jokes, was getting more Google searches than Taylor Swift herself. What happened on Sunday did not stay in MSG or stay in New York, and it has now become a talking point for Democrats. Here was Obama. These are fellow citizens he's talking about, and that is the reason why this election should not be close. It should be clear. He, here's a good rule. If somebody does not respect you, if somebody does not see you, as fellow citizens with equal claims to opportunity, to the pursuit of happiness, to the American dream, you should not vote for them. Obama making it plain as he does, and you know those are new remarks because they are his response to Sunday. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm old enough in this campaign to remember when the Republican talking point was that Kamala Harris doesn't do enough interviews. Lately, she's been doing more than Trump. Many days, you, you can't get through a, a day or two without seeing her do an interview. She returned to the big radio show, The Breakfast Club, and spoke on this topic. Again, pointing out a, a stark contrast between he and I. Yes, I was in Philly meeting with leaders, many leaders in many communities, but including leaders in the Puerto Rican community, to talk with them about my longstanding commitment to Puerto Rico, to the people who live on that island, who have often been overlooked. Part of her message, again, directly calling into The Breakfast Club, which has a national audience, but is also located in New York, which has a rich tradition uh, of respect, diversity, parades, all of it, you name it, with the Puerto Rican community, which is all over the United States. And of course, they're a part of the United States as an island, but many Puerto Rican people are all over the United States or people of Puerto Rican descent. Which brings me to the backlash that the Trump campaign may not want, a type of smoke it might be unhelpful in the final week. They have brought out artists to be more vocal in public against Trump and for Harris in this key time. That includes people I bet you've heard of, like Jennifer Lopez, J. Lo herself, or Ricky Martin, and people who are very popular with the young generation, which, remember, Donald Trump's targeting with podcasts and everything else. Bad Bunny is one of the most streamed, most popular artists in the entire Western Hemisphere. He just put out a brand new video. If you want to get an idea of his reach, well, it's... 45 million followers on Instagram alone, and you're looking at it, it's, it's quite sort of uplifting and dramatic, uh, but what it partly does is tell a different version and a positive story of his native Puerto Rico, but he titled it Garbage as his sarcastic rebuttal. Now think about where you are. If you can do a one-word title of garbage and everyone knows what you mean, and a heck of a lot of people who follow music and culture, not just politics, know and Donald Trump said this, what you see on your screen is, quote, garbage. His rebuttal is, look at our great homeland. Look at the people and the culture and the contributions and the nature. This is garbage to you, in a way? Now, I can mention that this was uh, Puerto Rican icons that were highlighted initially as part of a 2021 show. So the video is 
older, but the garbage titling and the messaging is clearly now. And there was another contrast that we can tell you reached many voters in a bad way for Trump. Remember, Trump's speakers came to New York and they went through a litany of attacks in their lower midtown Manhattan MSG setting on Sunday night. And they clearly were excited. They thought this was a pretty cool move. Maybe they forgot that a lot of Puerto Ricans live and people of Puerto Rican descent live in New York and around New York and in other swing states like Pennsylvania. But that was their approach to New York. And let me tell you something else. It was just seven miles north of where they uncorked all of that hatred on the following night when a very different view of New York's Puerto Rican lineage was celebrated in what you see here, a very highly watched, nonpartisan and more positive mode. You are looking, of course, at the Bronx born rapper of Puerto Rican descent, Fat Joe. He has songs in English and sometimes Spanish. He's worked with a lot of different artists, reggaeton artists. He has, full disclosure, been on the beat a time or two with Bill Crystal. But he seamlessly came out onto that big, big setting, the actual field of the World Series in another iconic New York sports venue. This is a very different way to reflect diversity and America. And of course, something that you don't have to be an expert on New York to know, which is there's a lot of popular Puerto Ricans in New York and in Pennsylvania, which brings us back to the politics. How is this all playing? The fallout, quote, spreading like wildfire there. Politico has that report stating that many Puerto Rican voters there who number in the hundreds of thousands are, quote, furious about the comments. If you check the census, the Puerto Rican population is actually the largest detailed Hispanic group. So we talk about Latinos and Trump sometimes gives it an amalgamation. Of course, there's many different ways to count from geography to your personal background. But this is the largest detailed Hispanic group in the crucial swing state of Pennsylvania. Attack them as you see fit, if that's your political strategy. Trump tonight is holding a rally in that same state, specifically in Allentown, which is over half the population identifies as Hispanic. And again, the largest plurality within that Hispanic group in PA is Puerto Rican.